Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. He sold us empty land for a summer home and tried to negate it once the land's worth increased. After that, Entitled Mom freaks out at a charity haunted house. After that, you're a bad influence, so I'm gonna ruin your wedding. And after that, Entitled Kid tries to take sentimental toy. Entitled Mom accuses me of attacking him. Unless you want to run into Karen today, please do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And if you want Karen to record a script for you, visit Mr. Reddit on Fiverr. Link below. He sold us empty land for a summer home and tried to negate it once the land's worth increased. Okay. So this had been an issue that had been ongoing in the legal system for a couple of years, but only a couple months ago, it was finally settled. Warning, I don't know exactly how it all worked out since my parents kept me out of the loop, so I'll tell this story as good as I can, and from what I managed to gather. So please, if something sounds weird or misplaced, well, nothing I can do, really, but apologize. English ain't my first language, so I'll try to explain it as good as I can with my skills in it. Cast. We've got Fossil, old man and previous owner of the land. We've got Peck, my dad, current co-owner of the land. Fake name, obviously. We've got Junior, dad's friend, neighbor, and co-owner of the land. Story. Before we go any further, I just want to explain what I meant above about co-owning the land. Peck and Junior bought the land together. I don't remember how much it cost them, but they each paid half of the money so they both co-owned the land. The land was quite spacious, so there was enough area to build two walls to divide the houses and each side create their own house, garden, etc, etc. I hope I'm explaining this well. Forgot to mention, the land was in the intentions to build a summer home in another city, so we could go there to spend holidays, or the summer, when we just felt like it. And while the beach wasn't necessarily right next to it, it was a very short distance from the land. Anyway, Everything was going nice before the purchase. Fossil was actually nice at first, and everything went well. Peck and Junior signed a contract, and the land was now ours. However, everything went downhill fast. Apparently, soon after the purchase, the city hall decided to asphalt the main road that connected the street that the land and other neighbor houses were located on, as it was previously a sand road. Because of this, the price of the houses and land increased, Fossil realized this, and realizing that he lost the chance of selling it at a higher price, decided to go against the contract and try to claim the land back. And that's when all heck broke loose. Following that, an all-out war started. Fossil versus Peck and Junior. Fossil began threatening them about taking them to court, and how the land was still his, and the contract was nullified, and blah blah blah. Problem is, Peck and Junior were still paying. They didn't pay all of the money immediately because neither my family or Junior's had anywhere near enough cash to pay it out at the spot. So we paid in finances, like a specific amount per month or something. That part was actually blurry to me because my parents never specified how it worked, but it was something like that. Anyways, that meant Fossil was having our money hostage and thus Peck and Junior refused to pay the remainder of the deal deciding that since Fossil was trying to get the land back and holding their money hostage, they would play the same game. According to my mother, who was aware of everything, but decided to let those two settle it, Peck and Junior at some point went to Fossil's house to try and come up with an agreement, and Junior's family also accompanied them. Apparently, according to my mother of course, Fossil was incredibly hostile and angry, and according to Junior, had some sort of a weapon. And once they realized they weren't going anywhere, they decided to leave. And once they turned around, Fossil apparently tried to chase them with it. And Junior stopped him by grabbing a piece of wood and threatening him if he took one more step towards him, his family, or Peck. And Fossil realized he was outmatched and backed off, but continued to spew threats. After that, they took it to court. But for some reason, the entire thing took a couple of years to finally get settled. During that time skip, I have no idea what was going on, and Peck and Junior went to a couple of hearings on the land city, but I never went because, honestly, I had no idea what the process was. 
and didn't actually care, as long as Fossil paid for trying to do us over. During this time, my maternal uncle became a licensed lawyer, and my mother asked for his help and advice, and my uncle pretty much said that Fossil was digging his own hole. Anyway, on the day of the final, conclusive hearing, it all ended. Fossil showed up to court, and once the judge asked for their sides of the story, Fossil pulled out a fake contract. Yes, dear reader, you read that right. He pulled out a fake contract with his signature on it, but not Peck and Jr.'s, and claimed that Peck and Jr. never signed anything. Therefore, the land was officially his and demanded that they return it to him. However, Peck and Jr. pulled an Uno reverse card and revealed the actual contract with Peck, Jr. and Fossil signature on it and pretty much revealed that Fossil was trying to do them all over. Also, during the two years this had been going on, Fossil went to our land and built a small cabin for himself. Yep, he believed that he was surely gonna win. He built a cabin of the size of a small bathroom and claimed that the cabin had been built before he even sold the land. Stupid guy. But cameras showed the construction taking place in between the two years that this whole thing was going on. So, strike one. Then, Peck and Jr. showed off video footage of the incident I mentioned before. Fossil trying to attack them, as it was all caught by a camera in one of the light posts in the street. Strike two. And finally, Fossil actually did himself over by continuously claiming contradictory statements. I don't know exactly what he was talking about, as once again, I wasn't present. But according to my father, Fossil said one thing and later on retconned himself before starting the cycle again. Eventually, the judge had heard enough and dropped the hammer. Fossil had lost the case completely, while also stating while Fossil wouldn't have to return the money Peck and Jr. already paid, Peck and Jr. wouldn't need to pay the remaining money they were required to because of this whole crap storm. Also, Fossil had 30 days to collect whatever items and tools he left behind at the cabin he built. Otherwise, Peck and Jr. could claim it as their own. And aside from that, Fossil had to pay both parties lawyer fees and should he ever attempt anything and or even try to talk to Peckin Jr. about anything regarding the land, he would have immediately been sent to jail and considering his current age, he had most likely die in prison. And also, also, Fossil had to pay a large fine for the evidence of him trying to attack Peckin Jr. with the weapon or go to jail, and Fossil obviously chose the former. I don't know how much he paid, but I do know it was a lot of money. So, Fossil lost the case, made a fool out of himself, had to pay both lawyers for the trouble, and had to pay an additional amount of money for the fine. And we kept land for cheaper than we were supposed to. Ain't karma a bee, huh Fossil? Next we've got, Entitled Mom Freaks Out at a Charity Haunted House. As you all know, it is Spooktober. This means all over the country, haunted houses are opening their doors. My local haunted house is not impressive, but one of the girls' dorms at my college puts one on for a weekend to benefit a charity. It's for a good cause, and you get some solid scares, so it's a good way to kill some time. My college is near an elementary school, so a lot of moms bring their kids for some fun. Usually, worst case scenario is we have to comfort a crying kid. There is now a new worst case scenario. I didn't have my costume ready yet, so I was just taking entry fees and guiding the guests through the little path. Enter Entitled Mom. She's got a herd of four innocent kids. Right away, she scoffs at the $2 each required donation. Entitled Mom. It's a college haunted house. Why do you need to charge entry? Me. Well, this is benefiting a great local charity, which is why we put this on every year. She kind of rolls her eyes and hands over the $10 for her and her kids. The way this works, we can't take everyone through at the same time, so we have a waiting area. There's some candy and a movie playing, and we call names when we find a group that accommodates the elevator. A lot of people come with friends, so if you have a big party like Entitled Mom, you'll have to wait longer. So after about 5 minutes, she comes up to us again. Hi, I'm Entitled Mom, party of 5. I think you might have forgotten about us. Me. Oh no, we haven't. You're just having to wait a little longer because you have such a large group. Entitled Mom looks at me like I'm stupid. I just saw you take a party of seven. Yeah, they were waiting for about 15 minutes. Entitled Mom kind of huffs. Okay then, can you at least turn off those subtitles on the movie? 
They're distracting my kids. My college has a very good speech therapy program, and so we have a large deaf population. I have a sensory disorder and need subtitles on most things. I was kind of taken aback. Me. Some of our guests need those, ma'am. I can't just take them off. Well, do you know how hard it is to keep kids entertained? Honestly, you've got no empathy. She leaves and goes to sit with innocent kids. Another five minutes pass and they get placed in a group with a group of about four college kids. Me and another girl are guiding them. We go through the rules. Most importantly, do not touch the performers. We had an issue after someone reflexively punched a guy a few years back, apparently. A college kid is sort of needling the innocent kids like, you guys feeling brave? You sure? All harmless fun. Entitled mom gets a little huffy. Quit harassing my kids. The guy just kind of shrugged and turned away. We get in the elevator and go down to the basement. Immediately, when we're guiding them down the first hallway, Entitled Mom complains about it being too dark. One of her darling babies could trip. It's well lit enough that you can see the layout of the room and furniture, just dark enough so the performers can hide. Entitled Mom, Can you just turn the lights on? Innocent kid, But Mom, then it wouldn't be scary. She gives in because one of her own kids shot her down. The rest of it passes mostly without event. The kids love it. One of them just laughs at all the scary stuff. Until we get near the exit. The last scare is someone jumping out near the group. Unfortunately, this particular person chooses to jump out right near Entitled Mom. Entitled Mom straight up shoves the performer to the floor. We immediately have to stop everything and make sure the girl is alright. She's fine, just a scratched elbow because of the way she caught herself. Me. We said you weren't allowed to touch the performers, ma'am. Why did you shove her? Entitled Mom. She was going to scare my babies. I'm protecting my kids. It's called being a mother. Then I'm saved. The lady who runs this whole operation, Trisha, comes down because someone told her. Trisha. She told you not to touch them. I assure you, our haunted house is safe for all ages. At worst, your kids are going to get a little scared. You should have put a warning. My kids could have been traumatized. Trisha, I guarantee you, they have more risk getting traumatized watching you freak out on college kids than a girl in fake blood jumping out at them. Entitled mom starts to leave, but the oldest kid actually stops, says that was great, and that he's sorry about his mom. Entitled mom, We can come back tomorrow when these mean ladies aren't working. Trisha, Ma'am, your kids are welcome back tomorrow. But for the safety of my performers, you won't be. This is BS. I need to keep my kids safe. You know nothing about being a mother. Trisha, I have two kids of my own, and if I acted the way you have tonight, they'd be ashamed of me. Entitled mom left, and the kids came with their much saner, less entitled dad. Happy ending. Next we've got, you're a bad influence, so I'm gonna ruin your wedding. We've got evil mother-in-law. We've got fiancé, and we've got me. Some history. Me and my fiancé have been together since we were 13, and when we were kids, we made mistakes together. Note how I say that. We would mess around, make a mess, and all over be little butts. Now, I have bipolar depression, so my moods tend to go haywire, and at this time, I was recently diagnosed and had absolutely no control along with the wrong medicine. So me and him got in a bit more trouble when we were 14, now I will admit, sometimes it was my fault, and sometimes it was his fault, though mostly it was us combined. But to his mother, I was the bane of her existence. I was taking her son down the wrong path. I was a horrible human being, and me being around him would cause him to get mental and yada yada. You get the picture. When we were 16, we broke up because she forced him. I only found out about this recently, but apparently she threatened to kick him out if he didn't break up with me. When we were 18, we rekindled and started dating again. Now she had calmed down a bit, but was still psycho. On my 20th birthday, he proposed to me, and obviously I said yes. Now that everything is caught up, on to why I am posting this and why the title is as it is. Me and him are set to get married in the winter of next year. Her way of finding out we were engaged was her RSVP because we didn't tell her and waited to post it on Facebook till after she got that for fear she would try to do something. 
Once we post it on Facebook and let everyone know, she comments, I do not approve. Okay, fine. We don't care. I posted a few pictures of failed wedding dresses on Facebook and she commented, Wow, you're fat. Why is my son marrying you? At fiancé, call off the wedding. On my post, like, jerk, I see that. Anyway, two days ago I posted how we picked a venue and are so excited. And then she commented and tagged her three sisters. Let's go dress shopping with a picture of a bridal store. She's so unbelievably petty. I show my fiancé all this and he calls his mom and tells her off. She's on speaker. Entitled mom. I should be allowed to wear what I want. Fiancé. No mom, this is my wedding and you can't wear white or a wedding dress. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not like this will last. I know it will just be a party and nothing more. Fiancé. Mom, I'm marrying OP and if you plan to come in white, you're not invited. Entitled mom. You can't not invite me. You're my son, and I can wear whatever I want. Tell that jerk because I know she's behind this. She's forcing you, isn't she? No, she's not forcing me. You're not coming now. Note, this isn't exact words since the convo was seriously long, but it's a summary of the convo. My fiancé then hangs up, and she tries calling again and again, spamming his phone with text messages. He's been ignoring her, and I'm hurt. I don't know how to handle this. We are adults, but she still feels entitled to him in his life. I need help as well as needing to share her entitledness. Next we've got... Entitled kid tries to take sentimental toy. Entitled mom accuses me of attacking him. We've got entitled mom. We've got my mom. We've got friend. We've got friend's younger brother. And me. Some sad backstory for this. My grandpa passed when I was three. When he was in the hospital... Me and my parents used to see him every Sunday after church. Usually, he'd give me sweets when we were there. But one day, he gave me a little white toy F1 car. A race car for those who don't know what F1 is. He passed away not long after he gave me that toy. I didn't really understand or know what happened being so young. All I noticed was we stopped going to the hospital after church. As I grew up a little, I realized that that toy car was the only thing I really had to remember him by. Sorry if this bit made you sad, but it's needed for the main part. When I was around 10 or 11, a new kid came into our Sunday school. We'll call him Friend, obviously not his real name, and he was about a year younger than me. Friend and I instantly bonded over our love of cars and our shared first name. Friend's mom is the entitled mom of our story. After a while, our moms decided to invite Friend round to my house one day after church. Entitled mom then insisted that friend's siblings also be invited, which we said was fine. Friend has three younger brothers and two younger sisters. When they were about to leave our house, I saw friend's younger brother, age two at the time, clutching a toy in his hands. It was the toy car my grandpa gave me. I instantly went over to him and took the toy from him. Being two years old, friend's younger brother started crying when I took the toy. Entitled mom turns around and comes over to us. What did you do to friend's younger brother? Why is he crying? Me. He tried to steal a toy from us and I took it back. That's all. Entitled mom, looking at the toy in my hand. You're too old for that now. Give it back to friend's younger brother. Me. Normally I would, but my grandpa gave me this toy before he passed away and it's all I have to remember him. It's too sentimental to give away. Entitled mom. You're too young to know what sentimental means. Give him that toy. I said no. It's my toy. At this point, my mom comes over. My mom. Entitled mom, what's going on? OP stole a toy from friend's younger brother, and he's trying to claim it's his. My mom looks concerned and looks at the toy in my hand. Is that grandpa's toy car? I nod. My mom. I'm sorry, but this is OP's. His grandpa gave it to him in the hospital not long before he passed away. And since OP was three at the time, it's really the only thing he has to remember him by. Entitled mom went from frustration to pure anger. Friend's young brother needs it more than OP. I'm a full-time single mother, so I can't afford to buy toys for all my children. At this point, she had a brand new nine-seater minibus and smoked at least a pack of cigarettes a day. The irony, man. The irony. My mom. I'm sorry. 
I'm sure OP wouldn't mind giving you some of his old toys he doesn't play with anymore. I actually wouldn't have either. Entitled Mom went from angry to WBC level angry, as in stupidly angry over nothing. No, you are the rudest, most selfish people I've ever met. You probably broke his wrist when you took the toy from him, you selfish little jerk. He had stopped crying by this point. If I had broken his wrist, he'd still be bawling. I didn't even touch him. I just took the toy from his hands. Entitled mom got her kids in the car. The older two, Fran and his older sister, went with their heads in their hands and sped away. Me and my mother spent the rest of the day confused as to how someone can be so entitled. For the next few years, Fran still came along to Sunday school and we still chatted. Entitled mom would always shoot me and my parents death glares whenever she saw us in church and she'd always take her kids out of Sunday school as soon as the service ended. Sunday school often ran on 10 or so minutes after the service ended, so that I couldn't chat to friend any more than she could help. They moved to the United States not long after friend turned 13. And shout outs to our regenerals of the day. Chissy Spider, Yanny Ducks Game, Tones Captain, Denect Tan Pasta Tube, and KC Cat 5. Become our next regenerals by leaving as many reads as you can in the comments below.